Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, last session I mentioned for the success of occupational health and safety management system, one activity is very very important that is energy isolations. I will tell you what is that energy isolations in the coming slides. In this uh, session, we will discuss in detail what is energy isolation, why it is required, how it is done. In detail, we will talk what are the statutory requirements for energy isolation. To make you more understand the whole concept, I brought a case study also. We, with that case study, you must be able to understand thoroughly. Look at the industrial scenario, any scenario. You have machines. Many times people have to work in the, on the machines or processes or equipment. People have to go and work. But these machines or processes may have many energies coming on that. That is why that, that has become machine. There could be electric energy, there could be hydraulic energy. There could be pneumatic energy, there could be thermal energy, there could be chemical energy and there could be gravitational energy. If man, what energy man has got? He has got brain, he has got ideas. If he has to separate this machine, First, he has to make all these energies zero. Otherwise, if any of the energy opens out, people will be killed. So, primary requirement for the occupational safety health is when people are going to work on the machines or processes or equipment which have got energy that energy has to be made 0, 0, 0, 0. This is one scenario. Other scenario, but why the machines and processes are there? They have to work, otherwise how the output will come. So, when the machines, processes are working, people should not enter. If the machines are working, if people enter, that they will be trapped in the energy and they will be died. Second case is very simple to stop. People put the barricades, thorough barricades so that people will not go. So, this we will not be discussing in this session. We are discussing this. When people are work, going to work on the machines, how you make energies positively positively zero. That is called energy isolation. That is called positive energy isolation. That is called isolation. All these terms are same. People talk about these terms different. People talk differently. Let me give you an example. A repeated, a repeated
a reputed integrated steel plant which has got reputation of working more than 100 years. Very, very successful uh, benchmark steel plant. When the incidents happened over all these 100 years, major incidents, fatalities were analyzed by a very reputed consultant. Very revealing fact has come. Around 70 to 80 percent of these incidents, major incidents, major fatalities are because of no energy isolations. People thought, okay, I am doing this job, nobody will put on, I put on the, put off the switch and started working, somebody came put on the switch. I finished my job, I told people, don't put on the power, I will go there and see, after 5 minutes you do it, after 5 minutes he had put on the power, meanwhile I, I, I could not come out of it and died. Such incidents are innumerable. So, the 70 to 80 percent of the incidents happen in the major hazardous industries because of the no energy isolations. So, what is the learning? Positive energy isolations or energy isolations will bring dramatic change in the safety performance of the organization. Dramatic change, see change. Blaming everything people make, people make mistakes, people are, people are careless. These statements making is very, very unfair. Or there is a myth, we have got emergency stop systems, we can put, up, put, the, put the emergency stop when it is required, that is also miss. The purpose of emergency, emergency stop is different. So, hazardous energies are essentially required to be controlled through positive energy isolation, not administrative controls, not warnings, not signages. They are to be controlled by positive energy isolation, which is engineering way of doing the isolation, not administrative way. This control of hazardous energy, lockout, tag out, it is also there in the it is also there in the OSHA three one two zero two zero zero two. What is OSHA? OSHA is Occupational Safety and Health Administration of the United States. They say, OSHA statute says, establish energy control procedures for removing the energy supply from all the machines. You should have energy control procedures to take out all these things. And putting appropriate lockout, tagout devices or lockout, tagout both, which is called LOTO, on the energy isolating devices. So, they say you isolate the energy, then you put the lock or tag or both. When appropriate, the procedure also must address stored potential, potentially reaccumulated energy. There are sometimes stored energies are there. What is stored energy? In a hydraulic system, say you have, uh, you have a crane, you have a crane, it goes up and down with a cylinder, hydraulic cylinder. This hydraulic cylinder will take it up, bring it down. Suppose if you put off the energy, still hydraulic, hydraulic power is there inside the cylinder. The boom is in the inclined position. So, there is a stored energy inside. If you, if you send people to work here, while working, if there is any leakage of the, the hydraulic fluid, it will come down and it will kill the people. So, stored energy means, he says, the stored energy also should be made zero and you put a mechanical stop here before people work. 
with the stored energy people cannot work we have mechanical stored energy we have electrical stored energy we have hydraulic stored energy we'll talk about those things so osha says that also should be made zero and you have to train the people and you have to inspect periodically whether these things are in position or not this is the requirement of osha so what are those what are those energy sources what are those energies we are talking power supply power supply power supply what is the power supply electrical hydraulic pneumatic power supplies stored stored energy due to gravity compressed springs springs when you put the spring compressed it has got stored energy if people have to work that compressed spring has to be made to the normal position then only people should work external influences suppose some wind energy is coming while working all those things also to be isolated before people go friends there are three important words which we should remember in this whole session one is lockout tag out isolation what is lockout when electrical power is there you put off the switch put off and put a lock that is called lockout you put off and put a lock that is called lockout when the gas is moving in a pipeline there is a valve you close the valve put a lock here lockout tag out means you close it and put a tag warning sign hey, i am i have closed it don't put on that's an administrative control that is called tag out who had who had uh, lock who had closed it so and so had closed i so and so have closed do not put on, put on that is tag out first is lock out second is tag out third is isolation isolation is putting off and separating it you have to put off the power and separate it in no cases they will join in many cases if you don't separate there is a chances of they getting join because of various conditions so isolation means you put off and separate then you put the lock so you put off separate and put the lock nowhere the energy can come that is called energy isolation so this is what uh, we have talked the lock out tag out what i discussed is the same we have mentioned it here so tag out is a warning signs lock out is a locking both cases we are putting off power putting off the energy that's all so when when you require uh, putting off the power when you require uh, lock out tag out or isolation there are various activities if you want to do thorough inspection of the machines you have to go inside and check various things if you want to do corrective actions some adjustments you have to do some blocks you have to put some wedges you have to put you have to do adjustments settings or you have to load many things in the machine unload by going to the machine or if you if you want to change the tools or you have to put the lubrication in the machines very very places which is which if you don't put off the power you may you may get entrapped 
cleaning, decommissioning, maintenance, diagnostic, working on the power circuits, major maintenance. When you have to do all these things, you require you are in the danger zone. You are in the danger zone. If you want to be not in the danger zone and do the job, you it calls for isolation. What is isolation? Isolation is disconnecting, separating. You have to disconnect and separate. Two activities. Disconnecting, separating. In lockout and tag out, only disconnecting. In lockout and tag out, only disconnecting. In isolation, disconnecting and separating. Then you have to put the lock and you have to dissipate. Then you have to dissipate the energies. Isolation is not completed unless you dissipate the energies which are there at the, in that. So, energy, energy storing means mechanical parts continue to move through inertia. Flywheels, even if you put off, it will keep rotating. Capa the, in, in the electrical circuit, capacitors, in the gases, accumulators, pressurized fluids, springs, they are all called, they are having em energies, all these things are to be dissipated, de-energized. Is it over with that? No. Afterwards, you have to see, you have to see by means of various techniques whether isolation has happened 100 percent what you wanted, you have to verify. Verify through procedures, verify through gauges, verify through testing, then you have to start the job. This is the process of energy isolation. So, isolate, the location of the number of isolation devices varies to be isolated. I know that I am working there, but varies to be isolated. This is called energy source identification. Energy source identification. Where I have to put the locks? Energy source identification. When I have to put the locks? and locking devices. So, what are the locking devices? Pad locks, trap, somewhere addition, outside the external keys, locks are key incorporated to the machine itself. Are lockable covers and enclosures, you cover the lock, lockable covers and enclosures. These are all the various devices for the locking. So, the devices which have got stored energy, the devices for the stored energy dissipation shall be incorporated into the machine where store, stored energy can give rise to hazard. Such devices include brakes which absorb energy, resistors. When dissipation of the stored energy would be excessively, sometimes you cannot dissipate because if you dissipate the energy for starting it will take lot of time. Then you should have separate devices. The energy dis, without dissipation, how could you hold the component in position? You should put def, separate devices, but normally we avoid it. The devices for energy dissipation or restraint should be selected and arranged so that dissipation results from the isolation of the ma machine. The energy dissipation process does not give rise. See, while dissipation the energy. You should not trap in the hazardous. Suppose if the spring you want to release, you should very carefully, very through a procedure you have to uh, dissipate. So, energy dissipation procedures are also should be there. There are, there are many, many things, energy dissipation of the flywheels, energy dissipation of the pressurized fluids, I have seen, I have seen cases while dissipating the energy people have died, especially in hydraulic circuits. High pressure circuit, if you want to release the high pressure, 
that high pressure liquid hits the people, they will get injured and died. So, there are procedures for how to dissipate the energy. Verification, there are different, verification is very, very important. If, if everybody have said that they have put out the power, separated it, put the logs, put the tags, everything they have done. But it is very essential whether it is done properly or not, final place where people are working, there you should be able to see that really it is done or not. There are, there are, there are many ways of verification, there are visible verifications. There are built-in verification, pressure gauges, all these things. If the pressure gauge is put, if the pressure is showing zero, that means pressure is, uh, there is no pressure. Instruction books, instruction handbooks say that you, you check all these things. If it is yes, then it is, it is decimated. Or if you electrical thing, you can put the tester measure and see whether the power is there or not. So, you have to verify with different means to ensure, yes, isolation is done. Let us go through a case study. We are talking about the blast furnace case study. Blast furnace is generate gases, blast furnace gas, very, very hazardous, colorless, orderless, but very hazardous. If it is more than 30 ppm, people will be, people will die. It is more hazardous than LPG gases and all these things. So, when the, from the blast furnace, when the gases come out, they will have some dust content in that. We have to reduce the dust content to minimum levels, because the dust will not be burnt anywhere. It will go through the atmosphere finally. If it goes to the atmosphere, it will, it will create atmospheric hazards. Or all the equipments where this gas which we use for burning, those equipments will be jammed. So, we have to reduce the dust content to allowable limit. So, this blast furnace gas is sent to the <coughs> gas cleaning plant, where the dust percentage is reduced. This is the case study. So, blast furnace gas initially has got lot of dust content. It has to be, it is having around 20 grams per meter cube. We have to reduce it to the allowable limits. This is the case study. So, how, how it is done? How it is done and why energy isolation is required? You, you all must be knowing by this time P and ID diagrams. The gases from the blast furnace gas line will come to a bag filter or bag house, where the gas will go to the bag filters and the dust is catched, caught there. Something will go inside, something will go outside and finally, the dust which is going outside is taken out from these walls. Inside the gas, inside the filters, Whichever is, whichever dust is contained, periodically they have to be cleaned, washed. Those filters are to be taken out, washed and put back. How will you do that? People have to go inside, take out those filters, wash it, clean all the hopper. So, people have to go inside, inside the bag house for cleaning the dust cakes, cleaning the bags, all these things people have to go periodically in this. Can they go? 
blast furnace gas is going what you have to do if a person is going there people are going there all the energies going inside this have to be made zero what are the energies blast furnace blast furnace the input blast furnace output blast furnace input has to be made zero blast furnace output walls also made made zero why because in the reverse there should not be any flow coming inside there are a lot of nitrogen lines all those lines are used once you take out the blast furnace gas you have to purge it so that blast furnace traces of blast furnace gas also should not be there inside you have to purge it nitrogen purging we do so once blast furnace gas is taken out closed then you have to purge it then you close the blast furnace walls because uh, nitrogen walls if nitrogen walls are not closed if nitrogen is here then a process called asphyxiation people will not get the required amount of oxygen for the breathing so all the nitrogen lines are to be stopped isolated all the blast furnace gases are to be stopped isolated that is the requirement for the people to go into the bag filter how it is done first people have to isolate the electrical energies there is there are powers all the valves are valves are operated with the power so those valves electrical energy also to be stopped gases energy also to be seen and residual thermal energy also to be made zero that means once the blast furnace gas line this is the blast furnace gas this is butterfly wall this is the butterfly wall first people close the butterfly wall so that gas coming will become very 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 less butterfly wall is not zero leak proof then this is the goggle wall then goggle wall will they put up the goggle wall inside goggle wall normally nowadays there is a water seal goggle wall closing is not isolation because you have to separate it for separation either you separate it or put the water seal if you put the water seal gas will go through the wa water seal so if you put water here gas cannot go it is almost like separation so put the goggle wall off again this goggle wall you put off delivery side put off the butterfly wall then you put off the power to this they are made zero then you purge it with all this nitrogen walls when thorough purging is done people check whether what is the oxygen content it is thorough purging is done then you isolate all these walls that is the process we are to see then this this is totally isolated from all the energies electrical energy gases energy nitrogen energy <coughs> so i have written the sequence how the walls are to be closed blast the lines have been given names blast furnace gas line blast furnace gas line one this wall you have to close blast furnace gas line goggle wall you have to close blast furnace gas two you have to close this then how to do the nitrogen line nitrogen closing then you have to isolate the electric power then you have to verify how do you do verification by checking inside with the gas meters whether the gas is coming or not then you put all the locks the people who are whoever is working they have to put their locks they will take out the keys if the contractors are working say there are there are contractor a contractor b there are contractors working contractors say there are 10 people 10 people contractor people are not so educated 
they don't know this locking and all these things. So the contractor supervisor, he will put the lock. So before contractor supervisors, employees putting their lock, first lock has to be put by the equip the the isolated the man who has got knowledge isolating knowledge knowledge see there are three activities one is isolating planner isolation planner that is those red circles where it is to be put locks all those things could be done by the man who has got total knowledge about the things he is called isolation planner then isolator Isolator is the person who will go and put the lock on the equipment. So first lock he will put. In all the equipments he will put the locks. Nitrogen lines, blast furnace, gas lines, everywhere he will put the equipment locks. Those keys he will take and put it in a box. Put it in a box which is called isolation box. All the all the locks of the equipments have put here. Then he will put the isolation, put his own lock, group lock. After putting this equipment locks, group lock, then only others will put their own key, own locks on this, on that particular uh, lock. The, the isolation box is closed. And the one more lock isolation isolator will put. On that, people will keep on putting the locks. Whatever people are working, they will put the locks. If I complete my job, I will open out my lock. If all the people open out the locks, isolator will come to know, yes, everybody has done their job. Then he will open the lock. And he will open the equipment locks one by one. If anybody has not opened the lock, then the isolator cannot open the lock. All the people who have put the locks, when they have opened, then only the isolation box can be opened. Where the equipments, where the locks are provided, the keys are inside. That's why people say, my life is in my hand. Why? The person after isolation all the energies, he has put it in the isolation box. He had put one lock. That means all the energies are isolated and this group isolation box is isolated. It is there in this. Now if I had to work, I am putting my lock here. If I, and I keep my key inside my pocket. I keep doing my work. As long as I don't complete my job, my key is inside my hand. Nobody can open the isolation box. So my life is in my hand. When all the people, after doing the job, when they open the, their keys, then the, the isolator will open the isolating box and one, one by one the equipment they, he will open out. In this process, do we think any time at any time, a person can be affected by the energy. If I am a worker, I am working on the equipment bag filter, I am very, very comfortable because I feel nobody can open the, open the gas as long as my key is in my, my pocket. When I complete my job, then I open, then only others can open. Oh, the gas can come. So I am very, very comfortable. Otherwise, workers will have the fear. Anybody by mistake opens? Our management has the fear. By mistake, anybody opens the gases? It used to happen like that. So in the positive isolation, that is taken out. So this is the energy isolation. So what are the energies coming? What are the activities we have to do? What, are the, what is the method we will do? And how the locks are provided? Different locks, different valves. If you close the butterfly valve,
See, people go inside cleaning up the hopper, removal of the cakes, opening up the, all these jobs. First, he has to do the energy electrical isolation. That is MCC 10, panel 7, panel 22. He will put locks here. For gas cleaning, close the butterfly wall, close the goggle wall, close the all these walls people close, then they will put the locks. This is called energy source identification, where you have to put the locks, energy source identification. It is done by a very, very knowledgeable people. He is called energy planner, energy planner, very important person. Lot of training is given to them how to do this. So, the types of locks people use there are personal lock by the employees, there are personal lock by the contractor supervisors, there are equipment locks, there is group, group board locks, there is isolation box, isolation box. So, these are the different locks, four types of locks people use and isolation boxes. So, what is the equipment lock, group isolation lock, group lock, all those things we have put it here. So, here isolation planners, isolating person, protected person, all these things are, are the names of various people involved in this. What are the various things we use in this? This is the blank, when the gas line if you isolate, separate and put the blank. These are the, these are the blocks, stoppers for the hydraulic cylinders when they are lifted, stoppers when the hydraulic cylinder you lift it, then you put the stop. These are the locks, you see one person puts the lock, others can put on this, unless these locks are open, this cannot be open. Our scissors, one lock, scissors he had put the isolator and he had put his lock. Then all these holes others can put the locks. There are different ways. How the valves, walls, handles are locked. <coughs> so different handles, how do you lock? This is the isolation box. This is the isolation box where the, the energy isolator, he will, put, he will put the equipment locks, those equipment locks keys are put inside. Then on this he will put his own lock. These are the scissor locks because if the people are more, then he will put the scissor lock and all those people, they put the locks here. So unless these things are opened, it, this cannot be opened. Even if he opens, he cannot take it out. So, unless you open out, these keys are inside, they cannot be opened. If you have more number of equipments, you put, you use two, two isolating boxes and two are, two are connected with an equipment lock. So, people will not put locks here. Equipment lock, he will put it here, that key he will put it here and again equipment locks are there. So, they are, they are connected, group isolation, two boxes are connected. So, some examples, how the electrical energy is isolated, electrical ener energy which is coming here, coming here, coming here, they are put off their energies if the people are working here. Very important, belt conveyors, belt conveyor is used for transporting lot of materials bulk materials, continuous materials. Suppose, if you have to, the belts are joined, if they are the length is more, they are cut and joined here. If you have to join here, there is a gravity take, take out pulley always in the belt conveyor. The purpose of this is to give tension on the belt always, tension. So, if, if the gravity pulley is here with the weight, if you cut it, it will come down, it will fall down. People, people, people are working, they will be damaged. So, they are, this, this gravity counterweight has to be locked here, so that there is no load on this, 
then you have to do the work which you are supposed to do. This is called, this is called gravity isolation. This is called compressor isolation. Railway tracks, industries, railway tracks are there. If somebody is working there, people put the flags. They are not the energy isolation. They put the derailer. This is the derailer. When the when the any equipment comes, it will come here and it will get derailed. The equipment, the railway railway engine will get derailed. On the derailer, you put the lock so that nobody can open it. If I am working working it working in this direction, suppose if if both the side rails come, then two derailers in between I will be working. This is called mini, mini mess. In the hydraulic circuits, this is put, mini max is put. So, mini max by, by pressing this mini max, you can release the energy. And finally, you can check whether the pressure is 0 or not with these connections. Cranes, EOT cranes, EOT cranes, then they move. So, they will have long travel. So, totally you need not block, some, 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 some length you will block, other, other side people will be working. So, people, people will put locks here. They put the stoppers and put the lock. Why lock? Otherwise, stopper can be, anybody can take out, positive isolation. So, positive isolation for the EOT crane movement. What did we discuss? Why? Energy isolation is required when people are working on the machines. If you do not isolate the energies, people will get killed. That is what used to happen. So, the energy isolations are separating the energies and putting the blanks. Then you have to put the logs. By putting, by doing the energy isolation, disconnecting, separating, putting the lock, the people, positively people are saved. That is why these, these things are called positive isolation. The main motto of energy isolation is my life in my hand. So, my life nobody can take out, it is in my hand. Okay. So, this is how the energy isolations are ensured in the industries. And the industries who have put energy isolations in place, the safety performance has increased many folds drastically and safety performance come by design. This is also a part of safety by design. Thank you.